living in a co- in a country like South Africa, um, multilingual. Uh, I often feel like we don't embrace that. We don't use it. We see it as a deficit rather than a resource. <laughs> and I think there is so much that we can leverage from. Um, and the biggest thing is that um, this debate around do we want to promote African languages and multilingualism versus like reading in literature in English from on set. And I think the tension there, parents. Um, at, at least when you enroll your child into a primary school, they have the choice, right? They, it's not the child who says, Mama, I'm primary school. I think the parent makes that decision. So the one is that even when there's been research that's been done, that even when parents cannot afford to send their child to an English load schools, they would still prefer their kids to be enrolled uh, English load schools versus a school that teaches in Isiklosa. So I think that's interesting. And then the second part is that in understanding this first phenom- uh, the first phenomena is that there is a lot of uh, economy that is held with English. And I think this is what the Western civilization has remarkably have done. Um, sort of in our minds to say, here's a language, it gets used globally. If you do not speak it fluently, affluently, then your limits of prospects in this society is limited. So we know from research, there's a lot that that you can gain from a child being proficient in their, in their mother tongue um, because they transfer those skills even in learning in a second additional language. This world, and I'm not sure to what extent we will take on as South Africa that responsibility that English is the global language, but I do think that there's a space that government corporates can play in promoting uh, multilingualism and it's not just a statement that is stated on a constitution like my like, like I often ask myself like how do we from a workplace environment right how do we encourage multilingualism you know how do we incentivize so if Usika comes to me and she speaks four languages surely it's an asset for the and you know um, and not saying okay well we don't care that you speak four languages we just want English so it's also like a there's the workplace there's also the constitution, there's also the mindset, because it's a mindset change to say, you know, if Mdanam can speak English, they're most likely to succeed. The unfortunate thing is that that's how it plays out. And this is where it almost feels like corporate, government, workplaces need to connect the dots as well. Um, and to really leverage on our, on our rich, rich, rich resources um, that cost us nothing. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like you're born with it. It's a, it's a, it's a nurture, it's a natural DNA of, of Africans in, in a sense. So I think English, bilingualism, multilingualism, all important. I wouldn't say there's one over the other. I think there is ways and there's people that have done this and experimented with this and, and know what it would look like from a curriculum perspective. So we're not doing enough of that. Um, and I understand with English, there's a sense of... Um, associating it to quality.